Hello, dear friends. We're sincerely happy to greet you again. And today we will talk with the esteemed Igor Mikhailovich Danilov. Greetings. Igor Mihalovich, in the previous video we touched upon the topic of spreading the truth and informing about the Creative Society, and we said that sometimes it is merely thoughts that stop and immobilize people and do not give them an opportunity to implement what every person really wants. The demon inside, in a person's head, dictates to him to be silent about the truth, or to tell lies, or to talk only about what is good, although in fact, in the consumerist format, people's lives are getting worse and worse. Moreover, I remember a moment at our previous discussion when you said that sometimes the demon also dictates to people to talk about what is good and not to talk about what is bad, because if one talks about something bad, this bad thing actually happens. This is a very important point, and today I would like to begin our conversation exactly with it, because very often people ask us the following questions. Don't we exert influence with our attention by paying attention to bad things, by paying attention to what the climate Cerberus is doing, to those climate disasters which are happening in the world? Don't we influence and intensify the frequency and power of those climate disasters? Perhaps it is necessary to create an aggregate of sort of solely positive content, to talk only about prospects, only about the opportunities which open up in the creative society. How can we comment on this? Can we, people, influence the Cerberus and what is happening with the climate in such a way and aggravate climate disasters with our attention like that? Well, let's say, in any case, we, the majority of people, have a deep inner conviction that this can exert an influence. If we want something and invest our attention there, it is implemented. Many people have such an experience in their lives. This is natural. Why? Because a person, by giving his will, can receive something in return. In this case, people feel a potential in themselves and understand that when they are involved, for example, in the Creative Society project, they collect a lot of various information, they understand how serious this is, and realize how ruthless the Cerberus is, and how fast it is growing, and how everything is progressing. They understand that this is wrong. Anyway, you know, everyone also internally feels some kind of surrealism of what is happening. People understand that this should not be the case, things should be different in the world but we face sort of an incomprehensible reality, and it is inexplicable. Although it can all be logically explained, what is happening to the climate is clear and can be logically explained, and what is happening both at the level of geopolitics and in macroeconomics can be logically explained. Everything can be logically explained, but internally people disagree. They understand that the world should not be like this, that the world should be beautiful, it should be better. And many understand that there is a certain power inside that can influence it all. Well, again, we have actually said that it is exactly the power of real, which we use and through which we can achieve certain results, that creates such an understanding in people. Also, you know what is the most powerful? I would say is that if a person… Well, we don't even delve into practices. If a person simply observes himself and performs at least elementary, simple, and easy practices, not to mention serious and deep ones, then he feels that there is something powerful and strong in him, which is capable of changing not just a person's life, but the entire world as well. Why? Because there is a soul in each of us, and the soul is a part of the spiritual world, that world which even creates. It can not only change something, but can also create entire worlds, and it does create them. And we understand and feel this perfectly well. You see, there is one point here, and I would say this point is the most serious. This very feeling of ours, as well as our experience of using our own will in solving our own tasks, actually urges people to start thinking if we talk about what is good, and invest our attention solely in the good, in an idea that the climate is improving, that life is getting easier and better, that our creative society is being built by itself, 
then it will all be this way. Such an attitude is merely due to a little delusion and ignorance of elementary laws. Those laws which are not written in ordinary books or in the legislation of our countries, but the laws on which the entire world is based, and against the Cerberus friends, all our positive thoughts are powerless. Although there were cases in history when a foreign army attacked a country, they were coming on ships, the majority of people came out and started praying, and the ships really could not approach. It's an influence precisely on the weather, right? Of course. But not on the climate. This was a one-time event and their specific situation. And look, friends, we can use our rail to get some benefits for ourselves, right? And this is not even magic. But at the same time, all magic is based on the power of rail. As a small group of people, we can solve some of our tasks or use our rail in a small egregore to discover something good. Yet, as a small group of people, we won't be able to use our rail to solve a global task that affects all of humanity. So, in order for us to be able to resist the Cerberus, even if we speak such a metaphysical language, we need unification of the entire humanity. However, if we just sit around and say that everything is fine, everything is wonderful and the climate is getting better, it will not get better. In this case, we will be responsible for those people whom the Cerberus will destroy. Why? Because then we are lying. We are telling lies, we are saying, the Cerberus is good, it is retreating, it is diminishing, it is becoming weaker at the time when it is becoming stronger. And those who will be killed through its fault will be on our conscience. But when we tell the truth, we warn people, we tell people to be careful that the climate is changing, because our goal is not to intimidate, but to tell them and explain. And again, people, for the most part, live their own lives, they are fixated on their own problems, they don't have time or desire to see what is happening to the climate. Sometimes they watch the news, but we do understand that in the news political and economic crises are described, and sometimes information about the climate also slips through. As of today, climate is discussed fragmentarily, but no one talks about it as a whole. Why? Because everyone understands very well that the Cerberus is growing and the situation is changing drastically. Everything is getting much worse and more serious. Therefore, in the media, they try not to promote it all actively, not to talk about it. Otherwise, people might really panic. Plus, as of today, humanity cannot radically solve anything. Why? Because we live in the consumerist format. We are divided. Our egregore is torn into small fragments. And it is natural that we are no longer an integral unit. But only jointly will we be able to resist the Cerberus. Whatever one may say, whether we sit about, meditate or fantasize, while the essence is the same in this case. People cannot influence this way. Whether you meditate, pray or fantasize, the Cerberus doesn't care. We won't stop him. We will only deceive ourselves and others. That is why I think it is necessary to tell the truth. Yes, we shouldn't frighten people. But if people do not know the truth, they will live in delusion and they will not expect what can happen to them. Well, this way, at least those who hear us become a little bit alert, a little bit more careful. They start listening to the climate, even if they do nothing and live as they've been living, they become more careful. And in case, God forbid, the Cerberus is at their threshold, they are at least already prepared, because they have already subconsciously figured out the plan of evacuation or escape or where to hide or what to do. This can save their lives, and that's a huge advantage. Whereas if a person is not ready to meet the Cerberus, 
He won't have an evacuation plan or a place to hide. It will be an unexpected visit, which is very disastrous, as it stands today. Well, something like that, Tatiana. You know, Igor Mihalovich, we were also asked this question, how to understand such an expression that even one person can do a lot. The point is that… Of course he can. Many people said that even since childhood they felt that they can do anything, that they are the ones who can do everything, that they are important and needed, relatively speaking, in society for people. But at the same time, they are confronted with circumstances, with situations in the consumerist format, with crises, when they understand that they are no nobody, and, as they say, without any rights, and they cannot do anything. So this very inner dissonance and inner conflict, right. when you cannot come to terms with your own powerlessness, while at the same time you feel that you can do anything, precisely this state of things drives many people into a kind of apathy and depression, which is kind of a disease of our time. Therefore, of course, a lot of people either ignore the facts or they get hooked on a negative news feed, where they have an illusion that if they are informed, they are somehow armed, but they certainly do not know what to do with it. So how to understand that one person can actually do a lot, he can. including changing the destiny of the entire society? In fact, of course, let's take any person, whoever he may be, if he really wants, to change the world, he will succeed. He will. Sometimes it takes more time, sometimes less. But let's look at the entire history of humankind. After all, so many times individuals, literally just one person, brought a significant change into the life of the entire humanity in general, right? Let's just recall Edison. I mean, we all use light bulbs, electricity, right? Yes, right. Just look how it is. And the list goes on and on. Somebody invented a bicycle, radio and television were invented. After all, it was one person and he was able to change a lot, right? But consciousness will say that it doesn't apply to you. <laughs> But why not you? A simple question. It is the same in this case, in confronting that very Cerberus, again, in informing about the creative society, any person can do a lot and he or she doesn't need any special conditions or anything else for that. But the main thing is to understand the importance of what you are doing, to see the goal and to ignore the obstacles. But as soon as a person starts thinking, what will they think of me? That is, again, he begins to perceive those stopping thoughts. This immobilizes him much more than any external conditions. After all, any door, if it's a door, it opens. Therefore, you can come to any person, find a reason to talk, And, among other things, tell people about the Creative Society, right? I mean, a person can do it all. One can never trace this chain of cause and effect relations, how it… Of course. Look, an ordinary person decides to change the world, to support the Creative Society, because he has become inspired by it, he has understood and has studied it. He's an intelligent person, he begins to inform, tells two or three people, too few, But after all, he doesn't know which of these two or three will become inspired like him and eventually do much more than he did. For example, they will be able to inform 10 people, and of those 10 there will be one who will inform 100 people, and so on. This is possible, isn't it? It is. Well, everything starts with whom? With one person. And he doesn't even see this chain of events. And before long, in a few months, the whole world will already know about it. However, if this person, precisely this person, hasn't taken a step, if he hasn't been able to overcome Satan in himself, to step over Satan, who was saying, oh, come on, how will they understand you? They won't. Sit still. It's none of your business. Let others do that, right? What will your neighbors say about you? They will say you're a sectarian, or you support some weird Masonic movement or something else, that you support the globalists, right? But when a person has studied everything and understands that the Cerberus is real, this becomes natural for him, an important and vital need to really serve people, to inform them. So he makes a step a conscious step. And the key point here is a conscious step. Then, 
You know, one can even move mountains. Yes, right. It's very important, as you said, to be free from evaluations by other people because this evaluation on behalf of other people, whether you are good or bad, yes. really kind of stimulates and motivates you to act only when you get this positive evaluation. And definitely, it is very important, as you once said, that the creative society is a society of free people, which starts with this very freedom of every person. And with the understanding that when you are doing a really necessary and important thing, when you indeed stand up for the interest of the entire humanity, you have to realize that first and foremost, you will be not praised, but opposed, because you are doing the right thing, isn't that so? In our society, the good is always punished. It is always like that. When a person starts doing something really good and important for everybody, he faces misunderstanding and resistance. Meanwhile, one wants to be praised. thanked and praised, right? Yes, exactly. And who is a good person, Igor Mihalovich? A good person is one who doesn't listen to Satan in his head, who doesn't desire what he doesn't need, and who really doesn't expect praise. A good person is one who loves God, and therefore also loves other people. That is why he is good. He is good because Satan has no power over him. This is the best criterion to evaluate whether a person is good or bad. One who is free from consciousness. Of course. Well, who is a bad person? One who is actually dependent on the consciousness. A slave of shaitan. A slave of shaitan. Whether he wants it or not, you see, there is no such criterion as a good slave or a bad slave. A slave is a slave. If shaitan controls a person, it means that at any moment this person can still do whatever Satan commands him to do. Whereas if a person is free, well, freedom is first and foremost freedom from Satan's slavery over a person. In other words, when a person is free in spirit, he is free, the devil can no longer command him, so he can already freely distinguish the good from the bad and make a choice. That's the most important point. Then he can do a lot. Thus, we come to an understanding of what freedom is. Freedom is the right to choose, right? You see how simple everything is. The same is in this case. When a person is capable of choosing, let's say, to serve people honestly and properly, to voice the facts as they are, warning people of danger and to tell them about a way out that will make the lives of those same people much better than they currently have. Well, isn't this wonderful? It is wonderful. It is. We have no right to deprive ourselves and other people of freedom in such a way. <laughs> right. But I agree with you. People want magic, people want power, they want to sit and dream, and the Cerberus will supposedly run away from our glade, right? It will be scared of all of us sitting, meditating and thinking about the good. We can do that, but in such a case we may simply become deluded. Yet the Cerberus will not leave our glade, friends, if we do not drive it out. Well, in order for us to drive it out, I'll say it again, we should put a tight collar and a short leash on it, and make it obedient and controllable. If we as humanity fail to do that, then, no matter what we think, no matter how we think, and what we dream about, all this will not last long. And we understand this perfectly well and already see what is happening as of today. As for not telling the truth, and lying, lying first of all to oneself that everything will be fine, that it will somehow resolve itself. The Cerberus will not resolve itself. The Cerberus is already a serious problem. Therefore, we should either win, first of all, over ourselves, in order to become free, or submit. But we can submit only when we are controlled by Shaitan. To submit to Shaitan, it seems to me this is the worst solution, you know. It is actually better to fight the Cerberus, right? Right. As you once said, the more difficult the fight was, the more well-deserved is the victory. The more well-deserved is the victory, I agree. Therefore, everything is simple, friends. You shouldn't dream, but should act. You should take your destiny into your own hands. And if there is a dream, you should make it come true. Then everything will be fine. And of course, it's important to keep track of what you dream of, what you want as a human. If your dream is a banal, 
satisfaction of your own material interests, if there is no happiness for the entire humanity in your dreams, then, my friend, there will be no happiness for you either. Only by improving the life of the entire humanity can you improve it for yourself. That's the best option and the best dream, right? Yes, this is what distinguishes, fundamentally distinguishes the creative society from the consumerist format. If you want to feel good, you should do good for everyone. That's right. Whereas in the consumerist format, you won't actually succeed in doing good for everyone at the moment. We are all separate. Everyone lives by their own interests, according to their own laws. We even have different laws for everyone. What can we talk about here? Everything is different, we are fragmented, divided, and divided first and foremost by shaitan. And for us to reunite, well, there is a good reason, the Cerberus. You know, when we, as humanity, are on the threshold, there is not much choice in that case. The only problem is whether people will be able to realize that this is a serious threat, and it already exists. If we, as humanity, fail to realize this and unite all together into one big family, become one civilization, and really resist the Cerberus, then it sort of makes me feel sad. Still, it is probably better to realize it, isn't it? Of course. We really want to build the creative society, because we cannot even imagine what prospects are opening up. They are really great. You know, we really cannot imagine, although every person feels it. He does feel it. It's impossible not to feel those prospects that are actually opening up. Consciousness doesn't believe. That's the problem. We are so depressed, all of us as humanity on the whole, that we are not even able to realize the benefits that we can get in the creative society. And we have already learned that when somebody promises a lot of good things, it actually gets even worse. For that reason, such fear and mistrust arises in us, you know, even towards ourselves. When we know and understand that, yes, we need it, that it is wonderful, it's really great, but still, there is a thought like, it's too good, it cannot be true, you see? We are slaves to this consumerist format to such an extent, friends, that we don't even trust ourselves in what we can do. Although inside we sincerely want everyone to always be as happy as possible, of course. exceptionally you happy. You see, the consumerist format itself forces people to survive in this world, sometimes to act dishonestly against their conscience, whereas in fact everyone wants to live according to their conscience, everyone wants to live honestly with an open, you know, kind of visor, so to say. Without this inner conflict. Of course, the situation itself and the consumerist world itself are such that they force people to be afraid of each other, let's say, even if you treat other people fairly, you expect them to treat you badly anyway. Whereas the creative society is a world without blinders, I'll put it this way. It means huge opportunities, and you really said the truth, we cannot even imagine what prospects open up for humanity. There is one misunderstanding. On the one hand, we have a beautiful world, while on the other hand, we have the world we are currently in, the one with the Cerberus. And for some reason, people choose this world, because it is habitual, because they are weak, because we are controlled by Shaitan who shuts our mouths and immobilizes us, saying, let others do it while you sit still. You know, we've got used to it, we have been taught, that in case of revolutions or something like that, it's better to sit it out. Nobody knows who will come to power and before whom we'll have to answer. Therefore, friends, we must build a creative society, so that the world becomes simple, clear and free, once and for all, right? After all, this is easy, especially since everyone wants that, and also because we don't really have a choice. In fact, the creative society is capable of a lot, of a whole lot. It would be great to talk about it, but then we'll immediately come to a lengthy conversation, you know. It is interesting to see what the creative society is from a side we haven't yet looked from. We have said a lot about the benefits, they are natural, it is all, let's say, 
clear, familiar to us, what it gives at least to those friends who participate in the Creative Society project. But this is by no means the full extent of the opportunities that open up to humanity in the Creative Society. This means not only satisfaction of our natural needs, the health capsule and many other things, like the replicator, the absence of some duties, taxes and so forth. Yes, it's all fine, and it starts even from the transition period. But this is far from being the main thing. Well, it is interesting. Friends, please tell us, think and answer. What do you think is the most important thing that the Creative Society can give to the entire humanity? Not in the spiritual aspect, I'm saying it right away, because I understand that the first thought that appears is a free, society, a lot of time, somehow, immediately, the spiritual aspect. No, not in the spiritual aspect, but precisely for the entire humanity and in the material aspect, of course. Right? Interesting. Well, it's interesting. So, friends, we are waiting for the answer. Very interesting. Dear friends, please write your comments under this video, and we will certainly voice those comments of people in one of our next conversations. It is very interesting to find out what the Creative Society really gives to every human being. I would put it this way, to the society as a whole and to each person individually, I would say, this is the most interesting thing that the Creative Society can give. This is really interesting. We are waiting for the answers. Yes, right. But it doesn't give it immediately. I'll make a reservation and explain, friends. With the development of the Creative Society and already… Sort of in the long run. In the long run, yes. It is able to give the whole humanity and every individual something incredibly good in the material aspect. Have we intrigued people? Extremely. All right, friends, we are waiting for your answers. Thank you very much. Let's just love each other. Thank you. And not be silent, but be free. And not be silent. Thank you, friends. Peace be with you.